Do you want to sound like your favorite rock guitar legends? Or do you want to become a rock star in your own right? Well, then this is the lesson for you. We're going to look at a whole bunch of techniques that are used by all of your favorite rock gods, and you'll be playing like one in no time. You can go from sounding like this to something like this. So what was the difference between those two? You know, the first one didn't sound so bad. That's maybe how you'd play if you looked at a tab or watched a video lesson that showed you how to play all the right notes. But it's not about what you play so much as how you play it. There's some techniques that you can't really learn from a tab or just from playing the right notes. There are certain techniques you need to learn if you want to be able to sound like all of your favorite rock gods, Eddie Van Halen, Slash, Jimmy Page, whomever it is, and I'm going to teach you everything you need to know. Okay, so technique one, we're going to talk about pinch harmonics. This is what they sound like. In case you still don't know what I'm talking about, a lot of people also refer to pinch harmonics as artificial harmonics or squealies, colloquially speaking, because something like that, played with no pinch harmonics, can sound like this. When you add pinch harmonics, and you can hear there's that kind of like squealing harmonic sound that's added to it. So in order to create a pinch harmonic, you need to find a way to hit the string with another part of your hand after you initially pick it. So, the first thing you can try is picking a note and then tapping on the string somewhere above a pickup. Um, and try in a places. And you'll start hearing something that's kind of similar to a pinch harmonic. Uh, and again, once you can sort of get that down, give it a try using your thumb. guitar, try a few different locations. I'd recommend starting on the lower strings for now. I keep accidentally hitting the A string with my thumb, that's not what I mean to do. But when done right, you'll hear a little bit of that harmonic afterwards. There we go, finally that one worked the best. Uh, and again, this isn't the technique to actually create pinch harmonics. This is just an example of where you can start to sort of hear what that sounds like. But now what needs to happen is we need to bridge the gap between, you know, when we initially hit the strings with our pick and when our hand hits the strings. And that is why pinch harmonics are usually best achieved when you take your thumb and you move it further down on the pick. Because what happens is then, when you strike the string with your pick, your thumb will hit the string immediately afterwards, because you can see here it's sort of hanging over the edge a little bit. So pinch harmonics usually sound the best when you have quite a bit of overdrive or distortion on, when you're on the bridge pickup, and they definitely ring out really nicely when you, you know, use some vibrato with them as well. And if you don't know what vibrato is yet, we will be covering that a little bit later in this lesson. But... It depends on the soloist, it depends on your choice. Some people like to just throw in pinch harmonics here and there. To accent one note in particular. Or you could hear songs like uh, Lagrange by ZZ Top, where almost an entire solo at the end of the song is using pinch harmonics. So let me give you a lick right now, actually, that you could practice from that exact song and see if you can play every note with a pinch harmonic. Uh, if you can get to that point, great. If not, just keep working on one string, one note at a time. But this is a really cool lick um, to use in your soloing. We're in A minor pentatonic, and it sounds like this. <laughs> So, you know, this is just descending, minor pentatonic scale. Bend on the eighth fret, fifth fret. And again, every note has a pinch harmonic on it. And the last thing I want to say is... 
if you move your hand down and up the string as you're doing a pinch harmonic, you'll get different frequencies. And this is a really, really cool thing to use to your advantage as a guitar player, something to explore and have fun with. So again, just to show you the difference, how much magic pinch harmonics can bring, I'll play that ZZ Top lick without pinch harmonics, and then I'll play with. And we can hear which one sounds cooler. So this is without. And with. Nice. So the next technique I want to show you today is tapping. With all of these techniques, I think you can dive so deeply into them and there's so much more to learn, but I'm just giving a brief overview just to give you an example of all the essentials you need to know to sound like a rock god. Guitar tapping is definitely one that you should check out. And essentially, what it is, is instead of just doing hammer-ons and pull-offs with your fretting hand, which is what guitar players normally do, that sounds cool, but for it to be considered tapping, we also need to add our picking hand into the mix. Essentially, what you need to do is start by having all of your fingers already set up on the fretboard before you even strike the string. In this case, we're going to take a look at the opening to Crazy Train, Randy Rhodes, iconic guitar solo. What you can start with is putting your first finger on the seventh fret and then either your third finger or your pinky on the tenth fret, depending on you know, which one you're able to do pull-offs with. But now what you're going to do is take your picking hand and you're going to use it to pull off at the 14th fret. So the first step is to tap so that you can hear the note. That can be step one. See if you can tap on a string with your fretting hand and have it ring out like that. Now the next step is to be able to pull off and have the note ring out like what you just heard here. And even though when we think of pull-offs, we might think of, you know, literally just pulling off directly, awkward, directly upwards, we actually need to use a bit of a flicking motion in order to have the string resonate enough and have enough sustain. Um, and so what you can do is think of going down to the floor and up at the same time. It's kind of a weird thing, but I'm definitely thinking of a flicking motion more than anything. And then, once you're able to do that, you should have enough sustain that you can pull off with your fretting hand. And sometimes with tapping, you end up hammering back on, like this. But for the sake of this example, and especially if you're just starting, let's just start with pull-offs like this. doing that, you can try moving your fretting hand, pardon me, your picking hand, this one, around a little bit, and um, try it now tapping at the 15th fret. And something I did at the beginning of that example, which is important to point out, I accidentally hit the wrong string. You don't want to do that, of course, right? So this is an example of, you know, sort of maybe pulling you out of your comfort zone a little bit and um, forcing you to think about parts of your hand you wouldn't normally when you're playing. You might even find yourself watching your picking hand more than your fretting hand, but it's a great technique for rock guitar shredding. It can be used to show off and <laughs> be used as a part of a showman sort of thing you're doing, um, but also it can be used compositionally and especially when you start tapping with other fingers, you know, some people are able to tap with, you know, more than just their index finger, but with all fingers on their other hand, um, then it can become something a lot more harmonically rich and used for songwriting and all sorts of cool stuff, which is what a lot of modern players are doing. But that's tapping. So up next we have palm muting. And this is a technique that holds a very special place in my heart because I remember back when I was first starting to play, I could never figure out why my guitar teacher is playing sounded so much better than mine when we were playing the same thing. You know, he told me to play a power chord. But somehow when he played, it sounded like this. And it just 
just sounded so much cooler, you know? It's like this subtle but at the same time very powerful technique that just brings a level of finesse and rock and roll coolness to your playing. And essentially, palm muting is exactly what the name implies. You want to use your, your picking hand to mute the strings using your palm, of course. And once you take this hand and place it kind of close to the bridge, you can start experimenting with, you know, how much pressure you want to apply. If you don't apply enough, if you don't apply enough pressure, it could sound like this. And you could think, oh, I want it to sound more muted. Let's try a little more pressure, pushing downwards like this. You could put too much pressure and you could hear that it's too muted and it's also going out of tune because I'm actually detuning the strings by putting too much pressure like this. So it's about striking a balance. Try different amounts of pressure. You could even try moving it a few different places. You know, it depends on the guitar sometimes, but typically you want your hand, your palm to sort of be right next to the bridge like this. And it can be used to play single note lines. It could be used to play chords. Or power chords. And I think that's a very great place to start. If you take a power chord and you just focus on covering the lower strings. That sounds very rock and roll, very cool. Um, and then as you feel more and more comfortable, you can see what happens if you slide your palm down a little bit as you maybe ascend to higher strings. Uh, but it's all about taking your palm and muting the strings. That's why it's called palm muting. And it can add so much to your playing as a rock god. And I think that you should definitely check it out. All right, rock guitar technique four. This is vibrato. And if you've been watching any of my videos for a while, you will know that I am the biggest vibrato fan in the world because it really can be what separates a good guitar player from a great guitar player. It adds so much expression and finesse to your playing. And if you don't know what vibrato is, and you add that sort of like pulsating change in pitch like you just heard, that's vibrato. So two very important variables that help to characterize the sound of your vibrato are firstly, the width of it. Is it shallow or wide? You can hear that, you know, the variance in pitch can vary depending on, you know, how far you pull the string down. And we'll talk more about how to do that in just a moment. Uh, but another important variable is the speed because you can have a really fast vibrato or a really slow vibrato. And once you start thinking about those variables, it'll help you, you know, figure out what parts of your vibrato you do like, which parts you don't like. It can help you sound more like your favorite rock guitar gods because you can hear, you know, each player kind of has their own vibrato. So again, like most of the techniques we've talked about in this video, you can really focus on each one for hours and hours. There's so much to talk about. There are many different types of vibratos, but today I wanna to show you the one that I think you're gonna get the most mileage out of, and it's the one that's most commonly used by a lot of professional awesome guitar players, the wrist vibrato. And essentially, <laughs> My fingers aren't really moving. They're sort of staying in this formation, but then it's all coming from my wrist, as opposed to my fingers contracting and actually pulling the strings down. It's all coming from the wrist. Step one, take your third finger here and place it on the note that you want to apply vibrato to. In this case, I'm on the seventh fret of the G string, because why not? And I think it's definitely easier to start with the G string and the B string. Those strings typically on most guitars uh, are, are great to start with if you want to learn vibrato. And then from there, take your other available fingers, put it on the fretboard, and they'll be there to help support this finger. And they don't need to be on any particular fret. It won't change the pitch depending on where they are. You just want them to be somewhere comfortably on the neck like this. And 
the first thing you can do is play the note. Turn it to its neutral state. And now, this is the part that's a little bit trickier. We want to see if we can achieve that without our fingers contracting, like I was saying before. You want to be able to see your wrist moving in this sort of movement. Kind of like the, you know, surfer cowabunga thing. You see how my wrist is moving like this? Kind of the same thing when you're doing vibrato. You also want to make sure you can get it to a point where it's consistent. Like, that sounds a little bit like a mosquito, <laughs> maybe not the best. But again, start by trying to get this sort of going back and forth, you know, pulling it down, returning it to its neutral state, doing that over and over again, seeing if you can get a consistent rate. Over time, you'll start to develop the control uh, desired so that you can make the note sound exactly the way you want it to. And then when you add that to your playing, again, the amount of finesse that's added, you know, the difference between something with no vibrato, and something with vibrato. You can even apply it to bent notes. That's kind of something to work towards. Uh, that takes a little while to get there. I worked on it for a while. But the first step, can you just apply it to regular non-bent notes? And that's a great place to start. All right, so today we looked at what I think are the most essential rock guitar god techniques. We talked about pinch harmonics. We talked about tapping. We talked about palm muting. Nice. And then we talked about vibrato, my favorite technique ever. And I would love to know in the comments down below if there are any techniques that you think all r aspiring rock gods should check out or any techniques you'd like to see me cover in another video. And I'm going to play you out with a uh, rock guitar jam. I'll make sure to use all of those techniques so you can hear what they sound like in action. And rock on. Have a great day and peace. Bye.